Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. We behold gorillas, orangutans, or lions as kings of the jungle today, but a supposed 58 million years ago, however, there was another spectacular creature to which all the animal kingdom bowed down. Scientists call it Titanoboa serejonensis, and it's a 40-foot-long, one-ton heavy snake. If you're wondering, that's as long as a school bus and as heavy as a small rhino. It's believed after the extinction that killed the dinosaurs, these gargantuan snakes thrived, taking the top of the food chain in the jungles of South America. No other animal stood a chance for a long time. We don't know of any predator that could have hunted this giant snake. Today, the Titanoboa is, of course, extinct, but we cannot stop wondering, how would such a monstrous creature fit in our world? With jungles covering only 7% of the Earth, yet increasing global temperatures, could the Titanoboa survive? Better yet, could we expect them to return at some point in the future? How did they live? Let's look a bit closer at this giant. There's no point in comparing it too much to other snakes because the Titanoboa has no equal among modern snakes. Even the anaconda pales in comparison. Thanks to the Serajon fossil deposit in Colombia, we've been able to retrieve the remaining of one of the greatest creatures that have ever lived in the ancient tropical ecosystem. After the death of the dinosaurs, the South American jungle was much larger, hotter and wetter. Rivers constantly flooded the trees and mud covered the leaves, branches and animal carcasses, creating layers of decomposing matter. As you may anticipate, the Titanoboa thrived in this rich environment. Although it looked like a boa constrictor, scientists say its behavior resembled more that of the modern anaconda. It had both strength from its massive body as well as speed due to its shape, making it a fearsome predator. It's safe to assume that Titanoboa, like any snake, ate anything it could catch, provided it was an animal. But what attack methods did the snake use? Scientists assume that these giants were subduing their prey like constrictors do in modern days, by constricting them to death. This type of snake catches and squeezes prey with such intensity that it cannot expand its lungs anymore in order to breathe. Their prey dies by asphyxiation. While they didn't have fangs to inject venom, titanoboas are expected to have rows of recurved teeth that work like needles to hold the prey in place. Because of this tactic, no animal could have escaped the grip of the snake, unless the snake let it go itself. Pulling away would only have caused the teeth to sink in deeper and deeper. That leads us to some handy advice for you. If you ever find yourself in the unfortunate situation where an anaconda or a python latches onto your hand or leg, the best thing you can do is to try to push it deeper into the snake's mouth while holding onto something, and then you would try to open the jaws and pull your hand back. We don't want to scare you, but the worst thing to do would be to try to pull the hand or leg back. These are master predators. Across years of evolution, their bodies have adapted in anticipation of the prey's first reactions to escape. How could they live today? We've learned a lot about Titanoboas already to admire them from a distance, but just how well would these magnificent creatures integrate within our current ecosystem? Could they survive? Could we survive them? Temperatures First of all, the Titanoboa would come in a slightly different climate than it had when it was at the top of the food chain. An estimated 60 million years ago, the temperatures in South America would have varied between 30 and 33 degrees Celsius, while the current hottest average in the region is around 27.7 degrees Celsius. Today, the Titanoboa may need a knitted scarf to stay warm. One way to adapt its metabolism would be to grow smaller in size. As any cold-blooded animal, the snake's temperature depends on its habitat. In warmer climates, reptiles can grow bigger to absorb more energy, which they need to keep their metabolism running. So, in the absence of this factor, the Titanoboa may not be as titanic anymore. Fossil records show that other giant snake species, such as the Mad Stoya, that managed to survive an estimated 20 million years after the Titanoboa went extinct, shows that giant snakes did not vanish overnight, but since the Mad Stoya was smaller than Titanoboa, they support the theory that snakes decreased in size as global temperatures fell. Diet all right, so it might get a bit smaller in time, but still, how would Titanoboa survive? During its time, the forest was much different than today. It was incredibly productive with tons of biomass. There was an extensive system of rivers that crossed the landscapes, creating a rich biodiversity. Prey was widely available, and the Lord of the Jungle had, as any top predator can afford, a varied diet. 
What would the giant snake eat today? Scientists assume that its most likely source of prey would be crocodiles. This is a common behaviour among large snakes today as they're seen attacking and swallowing crocodiles. For the Titanoboa, this would be as easy as catching a fly. Turtles could be another item on the menu. Luckily, turtles are not as gigantic today as they were during the Paleocene, making them much easier prey. In the past, the huge shells would have kept lazy Titanoboas not willing to spend too much energy with food at a distance most of the time. A simple yet effective prey would be large fish. Today, other snakes such as constrictors and anacondas are known to feed on fish using constriction and asphyxiation. Certain birds and small mammals would also make the list and would certainly be preferred by younger snakes. And finally, we assume they'd eat smaller snakes. After all, snakes are renowned for their cannibalism. Habitat Another concern with titanoboas fitting in our world today regards their habitat. Unfortunately, the once lush biodiverse rainforests in Colombia where giant snakes thrived have made space for the largest coal mine in the country. The place is also situated higher above the sea level than it would have been at 60 million years ago. In this case, we believe the giant snakes would find the next best place to thrive. Could it be the oceans? If that were possible, it would make the titanoboas even more dangerous. That's because the buoyancy of the water would counteract the effects of gravity on the body, making their large weight less of a problem. This would increase the titanopoa's speed and efficiency in catching prey. Oh, and by the way, the same effect is what allows marine animals such as whales to grow so large. Interaction with humans That being said, how would humans feel about coexisting with a prehistoric snake of nightmares? Well, we assume not great. We are very accustomed to finding ourselves at the top of the food chain, outsmarting or defending ourselves against every fierce predator. But giant snakes? There are two possibilities here. If we were threatened, we could hunt them down to either extinction or to a decimated population that would not dare come close to human sites. That would be, of course, a pity, given the magnificence of these animals. Moreover, if alive, they could offer some unexpected benefits. Shedded snakeskin has been increasingly popular in the fashion industry as prime material for bags and shoes, among others. The Titanoboa could offer larger quantities of this expensive material than ever before, making snakeskin more affordable than it is today and helping global economies. Another possibility is that the snakes would live in areas from where interaction with our species would be less threatening, such as deep ocean waters. They would feed on water animals and be living a completely different life than they once had in the jungle. Wait, are we sure they aren't there as we speak? Possibility cannot be ruled out completely. As we know, biology is amazingly adaptable, and according to the National Ocean Service, we have explored only a shocking 5% of the Earth's oceans, especially the ocean below the surface. At this point, we hold more mysteries about the ocean than outer space. We still don't hold the technology necessary to chart the oceans and ocean floors as we would want to. Furthermore, the depth is huge. The Mariana Trench, the deepest place in the ocean, is seven miles deep. Who knows what hides out there? trying to survive the new conditions of the Earth. Could they actually return? Talking about the new conditions on Earth, the warmer climate the Earth is experiencing due to global warming could actually trigger the reappearance of giant types of snake, such as the Titanoboa. As we've seen, reptiles are dependent on external temperatures to heat up their bodies. The warmer it is, the more they grow in size to harmonize the exchange of energy. There's no wonder that the same site where the Titanoboa was discovered has been a grave to giant turtles and crocodiles. In a way, it would be reassuring to learn that animals and plants could adapt to higher temperatures, since they are, at this point, inevitable to a certain degree. But the thought is also terrifying. Are we capable of confronting the re-emergence of giant creatures? Could we devise the necessary conditions to keep their species safe, while also defending ourselves against the perils they bring? Hard to answer. Scientists, however, hurry to clarify that such an evolution would not happen too quickly. A new species requires geological time to develop, and so it could take up to a million years or more for giant snakes to repopulate the Earth. That was it for today's episode. We hope our journey through the world of lost reptiles left you more excited than terrified. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button, do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.